ESPN. Well, the Sox may have changed colors, but the results are the same. Red last year, white this year. The final out recorded by Juan Uribe, who was outstanding. Bobby Jenks is a rookie, closes it out. And since 1917, they hadn't celebrated like they are now. The Chicago White Sox, World Series champions. Jermaine Dye with three hits is the most valuable player. And a season of success ends with the ultimate as Chicago sends Vigio and the Strohs home on half. Baseball tonight on the road, driven by Chevrolet. American League continues its dominance. Last year, the Red Sox sweep, and this year, it's a White Sox sweep. And over our shoulders, I mean, this is some hour after the game ended. Chicago's fans, their players, their manager on the field. Larry Boa, Harold Reynolds, Peter Gammons, I'm Carl Ravage. It's all over, and it all went the same way it's gone all year for both of these teams. Ozzy Guillen and his club has to deal with Brandon Backey, who everyone looks at as really the weak link on the, he's not. He no. pitched a great game. Well, he really did. That's probably the hardest ball they hit all day off him right there, right back no, at it. Yeah, his last start against the Cardinals was a masterpiece as well. Mike Lamb, some offense early, a double to the wall and right in the bottom of the second. But as we saw so often in this series and in this game, Astros runners end up getting stranded. Brandon Backey, top four, Paul Canerco. Coming into this game, both he and Dye had four hits each, and there was a battle on for MVP. He didn't get many, neither did Persinski. Aaron Rowe has gone as well. Carl, that slider was unbelievable. 17 swings and misses on sliders in seven innings. That's unheard of. Joe Creedy checks out. Uribe strikes out. He's got five strikeouts in a row. And the next batter, Freddy Garcia. And this is a tremendous play right here by Adam Everett. We saw some great defense. When you got a one nothing ball game, that's what's going to happen. Sure was. There was good speed down that line, as you saw. It wasn't Garcia who was running. Meantime, we'll go to the six. Woo! Huge at bat right there because Lane was really dialed in. Freddie Garcia came up with a fastball up in. He hadn't thrown all day. Uh oh. Now to the seventh, and this one's a wall ball. Not Fenway, but it hits hard just below the Crawford boxes. And Rowan's going to put the brakes on there at third. Ber Berkman made a good job. He did a good job of getting that ball in. Watch Rowan? Rowan right here. He hesitated. He thought there was one out. I don't think he would have scored anyway, Rav, but uh, Berkman got that ball in quick. Next batter, Juan Uribe. There's that slider Peter talked about. <laughs> Good emotion from Backy. <laughs> he was into it, no doubt. Uh, he's out of it now because Brad Lidge is in on the eighth, and in game three, he had his lights out stuff. And Willie Harris, who has seven foot 19, is a pinch hitter, one of the really good guys in the game. Posednik, tough ball to Bunt Harold. High fastball and nice touch by Posednik. He squared around early and gave himself up. Round out leaves Harris in third. The MVP's Jermaine Dye. Three hits in this one. One nothing White Sox. Seven for 16 in the series. They bring in Cliff Polite and he hits Tavares. Yeah, he did. You, you know, right there you think something's going to happen. Then he get the wild pitch there. And this might have been a blessing in disguise for the White Sox, huh? Well, to Terrell. me, it was a huge play. It, it, absolutely, because you know Berkman's the one guy that you don't want to let beat you. They walk him intentionally. Enberg goes to second. Tavares tags. Now what does Ozzy do? And he's used all his players all series. So he brings in Neil Cox to face Vizcaino, the pinch hitter. And another tremendous play. See how he got off to the side of that ball that allows him to set his body where he can get the most arm strength on it, that throw, and he did. Bagwell had pinched it earlier with two outs and no one on the inning previous. That hurt him. Bottom nine. Lane, a little single to center, and just like that, here in Houston, they still believe a sack bunt. And then Burke. And then this. The role of Derek Jeter tonight is being played by Juan That's Uribe. What a play. That is a great <laughs> play. Juan Uribe grew up 10 yards from a baseball field. He's been playing baseball since he could crawl. He and his brothers, and he showed it in this game. Orlando Palmero. Hey, Jenks can't get there, but the arm does. The man with a golden gun sends the White Sox to a series victory. And Carl, what I liked about that play, he used the glove. If he tries to barehand that ball and gets by him, a run is going to score. Well, if he does get that job done, it's a 1-1 game. Instead, White Sox victorious. They go 6-0 on the road in the postseason. Freddie Garcia, another starter to give them seven innings.
Check this out. Here you see it winning World Series, their first place, and then being there the entire regular season. Really says something about the staying power of the Chicago White Sox team. And they're the first team to sweep a World Series with every pitcher that started going at least seven innings. But it was a hitter who was the MVP. Guys could have got it. You know, we all worked hard to do whatever we could to help this team win. And uh, guys came up with big hits in, in a lot of situations. And, uh, you know, it's just special for me to be thought of as, uh, you know, MVP and, and becoming an MVP in, uh, in that group. Outstanding for Jermaine Dye, the Chevrolet player of the day, is averaging the World Series of 438. And again, like many of the White Sox, he had come in with just four hits. But in this one, he ends up with three, and the White Sox, behind Dye and good pitching, win it. Chevrolet Player of the Day is brought to you by Chevrolet, Chevy and Baseball. They just go together. An American revolution. Tough to slay a dragon coming in before the game. Dye says we're treating it as if it's 0-0, and this is game one. And then somebody else said, well, let's treat it like it's 3-3 and play with some urgency. <laughs> he was outstanding. He was tremendous from the beginning of the series. And, and you know what? Batting practice does count. He had some tremendous swings in batting practice. It looked like he really was locked in. But let's go back to the beginning of the series. I thought his concentration and his at-bats. And talking to Jermaine, you know, he played his first World Series at 22 years old with the Braves, and he said, that experience being there before, I understood what it's all about. Well, this at bat right here off Roger Clemens, he fights off eight pitches on the ninth pitch, he hits a home run. Huge at bat that propelled him to that first win. In game three, here he is against Oswald, a tremendous at bat. Now, they had a five run fifth inning, and this at bat extended the inning. It may have been the biggest at bat of the inning. He goes down and gets a nasty changeup. Uh, breaking ball flips it into center field and then in the championship game game four the one they're gonna wrap it up 0-0 game leads with a nasty slider down the way throws him another one he lays off it he's seen it twice here's the third one he recognized recognizes it great recognition takes the ball right back up the middle not trying to do too much. understanding the situation is just drive the ball in for a base hit right. and that's what he did you look at the the White Sox they had Big plays tonight from guys who played a National League game. Pacetic with the bunt, die with the base hit. It's important to have been in those type of games before to understand the situations. Jermaine Die has learned how to play baseball, and he's playing at the top of the level right now, and that's why he's the MVP. There was a lot of growing up individually.